Have you ever thought about the fact that a lot of the unhappiness in your life is a result of the fact that you are listening to yourself rather than talking to yourself? That's a quote from Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, and I think the first time that I heard that, I was a little confused um, and also kind of interested. Like, what does he mean by the fact that I'm unhappy is because I am listening to myself rather than talking to myself? I mean, aren't, aren't those really the same thing? So here's the reality. Most of the time, you, you wake up and somebody's talking, and it's you. You're talking to yourself. You have thoughts from the moment that you wake up. And what's going on is you're kind of like tuning in to a radio station, you're just passively listening. And the radio station is you. Um, it's just the, the unthinking, inactive, passive thoughts that you have about the world around you, about the situations that you are in. And what he's talking about with talking to yourself and, and thus the way that you can be happy is that you take your hand and you go to the radio and you change the channel from the noisy static that you're tuned into and you turn the channel to gospel talk radio. Now, some of you don't like talk radio, so the analogy doesn't work for you. But what I mean is you are the host of this gospel talk radio. And what you are doing is you are talking to yourself what the gospel is. You're talking to yourself about the promises of God and reminding yourself about the joy that you find in Jesus. So I want to look at a passage today that is about reminding yourself of uh, the good news of Jesus. So here's the passage, it's Psalm 103, one through five. It says this, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So David is writing this and, and the goal here is that you would be happy in God and reminding yourself of the benefits of God is one of the ways that you um, talk to yourself the gospel so that you can be happy. So let's look at what David reminds himself about God. The first thing is he forgives all of your sin. So the first blessing that he's listing is possibly the most important blessing, the forgiveness of all of your sins. And when I say that, I do mean all of your sins. I don't just mean the sins that you've committed before this moment. I don't just mean the, the sin that you might even be committing right now. I don't know what you would be doing right now. Please don't hit your brother or sister. Um, or the sins that you will commit. It's, it's all of your sins, past, present, future, all of your sins are forgiven if you put your trust in Jesus. And, and it's not just the, for, the forgiveness of sins for sins that you have defeated. Like, yeah, I used to be a liar, but now um, I'm not, so I know that Jesus has forgiven those sins. If you currently are struggling with a particular sin and you can't seem to beat it, Jesus has forgiven you of that sin too. So all of your sins are forgiven by Jesus. It's not just one sin in the past or two sins in the future. It's all of your sins, past, present, future. They are forgiven. Next, he says, uh, so remember, uh, forget not all, all of his benefits, who forgives all of your iniquity, who heals all of your diseases. Now, we are living in a time right now where there is a lot of sickness going on. So you hear that possibly and say, well, there are a lot of people that are not being healed of the coronavirus. So how is it that God for 
forgives all your iniquity, and then heals all of your diseases. You might even have um, some kind of disease, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, and you go, I've prayed about this. God has not taken this away from me. So how is it that he heals all of my diseases? Well, I think because David is talking to his soul, we should see these as soul diseases. Okay, so we know about physical diseases, but what's a soul disease? Well, let's look at a physical disease for a second. A physical disease is something that um, causes pain and, and it, it typically means that your body is not working the way that it's supposed to. And I, I think the same is true of a soul disease. A soul disease causes pain and it means that your soul is not working the way that it's supposed to. So for all of us, we are all, as sinners, soul disease. Our souls do not work the way that they're supposed to. Our souls tend to value and love other things as being more important than God. So God should be at the top of our love, the top of our desire. And, and what happens because we're diseased in soul is we take uh, sports, video games, family, friends, whatever, and we put that above God. That's a soul disease. Or we even, you know, it could be like God is at the top and then there's other believers in your family and friend, you know, it, and, it, and like it works its way down. But like you might love a raccoon more than you love uh, someone at church. And like that would be a soul disease because you shouldn't love a raccoon more than you love a person at your church. So that's what I'm saying is, is a soul disease. And David is saying, okay, this is one of the benefits of God, this is one of the gifts he gives me, is he heals my soul diseases. So that God is at the top of my affection and desire in my soul. He, he sorts that out. And it won't be totally sorted out in this life because we are sinners, but someday he is going to heal all of our soul diseases and our physical diseases. So he heals the diseases of our soul. Then the next blessing, the next gift and benefit that God gives us, he says, who redeems your life from the pit. So I want you to imagine that you are walking through the woods, you're just strolling through, you're having a great time, you know, enjoying nature and all that kind of stuff if you're into that kind of thing. And um, you're walking around and all of a sudden, uh, the ground underneath you gives way and you find yourself in a pit and there's no like gentle slope out of this pit there's no branches that are sticking out of the pit to grab onto and get out um, you're just stuck there deep in a deep hole not able to get out before you fell in that pit you might have felt pretty independent and 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 self-sufficient um, and doing pretty well. Now you're in a pit and just gravity has gotten the best of you, right? You can't get out of that pit. What you need is you need somebody to pull you out of the pit. That's the only way that you're going to get out and live. If you stay in that pit long enough, you will die. But someone can come and be your rescuer to get you out of that pit so that you can live. So what David is saying is that God has redeemed his life from the pit, the pit of sin and death. God has sent his own son into the pit of sin and death and raised us up with him to get us out. That is one of the benefits that you have received as you have trusted in Jesus for your salvation. You have been rescued from the pit. But what's cool about this is that, you know, you don't just get raised out of the pit and then, you know, you kind of give each other hugs and you're like, hey, thanks, man, you know, and then you just walk off and you keep wandering through the woods. That's not what happens. When, when God redeems our lives from the pit, um, he does more than that. He crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. So he doesn't just view you as something um, 
to be saved and then done away with. Doesn't care if you're around. He, he wants to honor and love you after he's rescued you. Even though you were stuck just by gravity, by the laws of nature kept you down, um, he wants to honor and love you. So he crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. And then in his grace, um, this steadfast love does not end. It's not something that is just around for a little while and then, well, you sin, so then, you know, God doesn't love you anymore. It's steadfast love. It will never leave you. His mercy will never leave you. And you've been crowned as a royal son or daughter of the king. This is what he does for us. And then the last part that David sees is, um, is this. He satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So your strength is renewed as you are satisfied with good. Now, I would ask you, what is good? What is most ultimately good? God himself. So God satisfies us with himself. God delights to satisfy you with the greatest gift in the universe, himself. So he offers us a true satisfaction. You, know, you might be experiencing this right now. You might be very bored as all of the things that used to distract you are losing some of the excitement around them. And you are finding yourself dissatisfied. So I ask you then, have you been satisfied with God? Maybe one of the things that God is doing in this time for you right now is trying to show you that at the, at the kitchen table of God's uh, restaurant or, or however this works, he wants to give you so much more than the Lunchables that you have been living on for so long of happiness. And he has a Thanksgiving dinner prepared for you. He loves you too much to let you be satisfied off of such tiny things. He wants to satisfy you with himself. And then the result of this satisfaction is that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Your strength is renewed like the eagles. Joy happens. When you are satisfied in God, the overflow of that satisfaction is joy. So this is, is what I would want you to walk away with today is there's a lot of unhappiness right now that's going on because of the situation that we're in and just in life in general. But a lot of our, our unhappiness is due to the fact that I am listening to myself rather than talking to myself. And what we need is to talk to ourselves, remind ourselves of the truth of the gospel and what the benefits, what the blessings and gifts are of God for us because he loves us. Here are five. He has forgiven you all of your sin. He has healed all of your soul diseases so that you can love him the way that you're supposed to. He has redeemed your life from the pit. When you were helpless in a pit, God pitied you and brought you out of that pit at the cost of the life of his own son. And he has crowned you with a love that never ends and nothing can separate you from that love. And he is 100% committed to being merciful to you forever now. And he satisfies your soul with good things. First him and then the good things that he offers us in the world that we enjoy right now. So remind yourselves of these things this week, these benefits of, of God, and, and talk to yourself. Remind yourself of the truth of the gospel when things are difficult. Remind yourself of the truth that God is 100% for you in Jesus Christ.
At Northridge, we seek to be people who love God, love each other, and make a difference. So here's, here's my challenge for you would be, um, how can you love God right now? I, I mean, that answer probably comes pretty easily for most of us. It would be, um, you know, read your Bible and pray. That's how we connect with God. Um, but then how can you, as you are satisfied with God and in love with him, um, how can you um, love each other? And, and the, probably the context that you're experiencing that right now is with your family. How can you love your family? And I, I'm talking like daily, daily love God and then daily love each other. Maybe, you know, do something for your sibling or your mom or your dad. Maybe, maybe compliment them and tell them that they're doing a really good job. Just be encouragement to them. What are ways that you can love your family? Because just so you know, it, it is the hardest to love your family because, um, you know, you find them annoying and they find you annoying. So it's just, it's just hardest to love your family. So how can you love your family day to day this week? And the last thing is we also seek to make a difference. So how can you um, try to make a difference in your context right now of being at home? How can you love God, uh, bring that love into your family? And how can you try to bring other people into the love that you've received in God and that you are having for God and for your family. How can you reach out to people that you know, whether it's at your school um, or in a co-op if you're, you're homeschooled, um, online possibly if you play a lot of video games, how can you spread the gospel to people around you this week? One of the ways that uh, I'm wanting to do that this week is um, hashtag Jesus changed my life. Um, and it's just you sharing a video of yourself online. Now, some of you won't do this. Your parents don't want you to. Some of you hate being on camera. Um, I'm by myself sitting in the family room doing this right now. Um, but you can write a, a, a post on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, and share with people how Jesus has changed your life. Um, just a suggestion during this time that seems really hopeless for people, Jesus gives us hope. Um, so just consider that. I'm gonna be doing that myself, um, sharing how Jesus changed my life on my Facebook page. Um, but that's just one of the ways. So how, bottom line, how can you love God, love each other, and make a difference daily this week? Thanks guys, have a great week.